And time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, hope you had a good holiday. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Well, stocks on Wall Street surged on the first day of March as the spike in bond yields eased and investors uh, bought up tech stocks for the S&P. It was the biggest jump since last June. In the local markets, a nice gain today as well. What's the story in the global markets and here in Korea? Yes, if you look at the U.S. market, uh, after quite significant decline that we saw last week, uh, for the first week of March, uh, the first day, uh, U.S. market showed quite a significant jump. Uh, if you look at Dow Jones, it was up 2%. Uh, S&P 500 surged 2.4%. And NASDAQ actually climbed over 3%. And small mid-cap, uh, Russell 2000, was up 3.24%. Uh, one of the strongest movements that we have seen uh, in a quite a while. Um, the main reason for that is because of the policy front, the House of U.S. passed early Saturday a $1.9 trillion uh, COVID relief package, uh, and it's called American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. And Senate will now consider the legislations, and most likely it will pass within this week. Um, and on the pandemic side, uh, the Center for the Disease Control and Prevention Advisory Panel voted uh, Anonymous uh, the Sunday to recommend to use the Johnson & Johnson one-shot uh, COVID vaccine for the people uh, 18 age uh, or over. Uh, clearly, this kind of news is going to create uh, the likelihood of the economic recovery uh, going into the second quarter of this year. Uh, if that is the case, U.S. is expected to grow uh, somewhere around 4 to 5 percent year-on-year growth rate in terms of the GDP, uh, and that would have positive implications for the overall global market. Uh, however, though, if you look at the Asian market, uh, it didn't do well, uh, despite that it, was, it didn't do well last week, uh, particularly for China, uh, where you saw uh, somewhere between 0.7% uh, to about 2% correction, depending on the index. Um, the main reason for that is because of the possibility of uh, liquidity um, um, actually dwindling down as the PBOC, the, the central bank, might take away some part of the liquidity they injected uh, because of the huge amount of the fiscal policy that is expected to go in uh, for the uh, economy. Uh, all in all, uh, still people are very, very uncertain about what might be happening to the interest rate and the overall uh, economic uh, picture and the regulatory environment and liquidity condition. Uh, so we have to probably wait a little bit more uh, in order for to see some kind of trend uh, of the overall equity market in the future. Well, the upcoming uh, round of coronavirus relief payments in South Korea is going to be going to close to 7 million people, maximum of 5 million uh, won each they're talking about, which is more than around uh, $4,000. The government's also planning to spend in the billions to create around 275,000 new jobs for young people and women. So tell us about these plans and what kind of effect do you think it might have? Right. Obviously, this is a quite significant amount of the fiscal policy uh, they're planning. Uh, in terms of the boosting measures, obviously, they're both front of monetary and fiscal policy. As for the Korean government, uh, given the fact that the uh, level of the debt to GDP ratio being low, uh, the current government continues to push for the extra fiscal budget in order to boost the economy. As you said, uh, they're planning to provide uh, about uh, five million per uh, the company or so-called small mom and pop shop, uh, up to about 6.9 million people. Uh, clearly, that is a huge size of the boosting measure. Uh, on top of that, uh, they're trying to create new jobs for the youngsters and the women, uh, estimated to be about uh, 275,000 new jobs they're trying to create. Uh, clearly, um, these are all positive news in terms of the economic growth rate. However, though, uh, people might be confused in terms of uh, what kind of impact it might have on the 
the balance sheet of the government and also what kind of really the exact boosting measures would it be uh, and whether or not this will actually uh, link into the consumption pickup uh, for Korea, given the fact that the level of the leverage ratio of the consumers are extremely high. So, uh, yes, uh, this is really good news that the economy might recover. But uh, people might be worried about whether this is just going to be one shot thing um, as the, the spending picks up on, for this year. But uh, thereafter, would that be any uh, continued kind of trend where we see a economic growth rate on the domestic consumption side? However, though, the positive thing is, is that the exports are doing very well for Korea. Uh, and given that, uh, we think that the Korea will continue to be one of the better performing market uh, and economy relative to any other global markets. Well, zooming out here a little bit, uh, going back to the markets, uh, this week, in fact, uh, marks uh, one year since the big uh, sell-off last March in which uh, markets lost you know, a third of their value or, or so um, as the world started locking down. Investors saw an opportunity last year. They bought in. Stocks were back where they were by June or so and, of course, have risen since then. So some of this is the first time investors with some stimulus money in their pockets and the Fed even buying ETFs uh, last year. What do you say to the fears some have that we're in a bubble that's going to pop? Well, uh, yes, I think that people might be concerned about that. However, I think that we have to think about what's happening to the economic growth itself. Uh, clearly, uh, you're not going to have a bubble, or if you consider that as a bubble, uh, it's not going to be popping when economy is growing. Uh, when economic growth rate comes through and that results into the earnings growth rate of the overall companies, uh, then the equity market tends to move up even higher. Uh, we do estimate that the overall earnings pictures are going to be quite positive for this year, at least for 2021. Uh, question mark is that whether or not that continues for 2022. But in any case, we think that the uh, corporate earnings are going to be looking quite good with all these boosting measures that's happening. Uh, as for Korea, uh, as I said earlier, if you look at the overall export numbers, it is growing at 20% uh, plus year on year. Uh, that is very positive news, and that affects quite positively for the corporations in Korea, particularly for semiconductor businesses as well as automobile businesses, uh, electronics, EV market as well. Uh, so uh, clearly Korea seems to be well positioned for uh, the, the overall uh, next era of the fourth industrial revolution. So if that's the case, then we think that uh, it is a good entry point rather than thinking about uh, popping the bubble. Uh, we do estimate that the fair value of Kospi is expected to be about 3,700 uh, versus current index of below uh, uh, 3,100. Um, so we do think that over the next 12 months, uh, Korea market can gain uh, at least somewhere between 15 to 20 percent, uh, and that uh, the first-time investors should be looking at that as a positive news. But however, though, in terms of where you invest, uh, you should be focusing on those companies who have global competitiveness, including Samsung Electronics. Great. Uh, thank you so much for that, Mr. Yu. I always appreciate your insights, and uh, thanks for coming on today. Thank you very much.